Hello everybody, I'm John Cog, I'm the owner of Daniel Smith, and today we're going to continue our discussion. Um, last week, what I said we would go over, and I'm always open to um, your input, um, are blacks and grays. So I have a series of blacks and grays that I'll go over with you. Talk about some of the things they can do. Um, hello Stella, hello Tarun. Um, and I have some uh, Primatex minerals, which I'll go over with you. And then there were some questions from last time, and I see that uh, Joanne is watching. So Joanne um, had a message, and hers was about neutral tint. And it was, what makes this pigment, what in this pig's pigment um, turns the bright into neutrals? Actually, Joanne, what it is, is it's not so much the pigment, it's is the pigments involved, there's three of them, uh, neutral. Um, it's not. It's not. A, it's not a bright. It's not a dark. But it's a true neutral. And so normally, when you have two vibrant colors and you mix two vibrant colors, you get a vibrant color. Um, if you want to bring that down, because neutral tint is not a vibrant. It's kind of in the middle. It brings that vibrancy down. So you lose a little bit of the vibrancy, uh, but you don't have much. You still have a very vivid color. So that's the kind of the magic of the um, neutral tint. Hello, Stella. Um, there, it's truly, it, they are really kind of magical. You can also use um, Payne's Gray. People use Payne's Gray, but Payne's Gray would have a bias toward the blue, whereas the neutral tint doesn't have that bias. Hello, Maria from Houston. Hello, Linda Dahl. And Ethel and Giovanni, it's great to have you here. I'm going to be moving to two desks today, and to not get you ceased to seasick, I'll let you know when I'm getting ready to move because um, sometimes we lose connection for a couple of seconds when, when that happens. Um, what's the difference between CAD Yellow Deep and Hansa Yellow Deep was another question. And the difference there is that the CAD is more of a semi-opaque, whereas the Hansa Yellow Deep is more of a, a semi-transparent. So um, last week we talked about what could be um, switched out for CAD colors and Hansa's, and this would be one difference that the Hansa and the CAD use that we that we sell. And what is uh, this was from Nisha, and Nisha had a question about um, what single pigment can she use for a lizard and crimson, and so what we would recommend is that you use PR one seventy seven. Pigment red number 177, and that's anthanocoid red. That's a pretty good one. Hello, Tom Schuller. I watch you all the time on Facebook. Glad to see that you're watching. Um, okay, so what I thought we would do today is we would look at the, the Primatex. And people ask me all the time, why is it called Primatex? And Primatex comes from um, Dan, Dan Smith, the founder, I were talking about um, art for the millennia. And wherever there's been creative people, there's been the need to express oneself. And that's in every continent. Um, not Antarctica, uh, but who knows, could be Antarctica as well. And so Primatech comes from primitive, and then tech is from technology. So Dan lives in South Dakota, and in South Dakota, um, there's a lot of uh, Plains Indians who did great artwork, um, except the artwork was lost because it was used on ponies or it was used on faces and it didn't last. Whereas in uh, Alaska, the Inuits did totem poles and till today, those totem poles with vibrant colors still exist. The thing that was the same for both is uh, people would find um, ochres and siennas in riverbeds, etc. They would crush those up. They would put that into a fat, an animal fat, and create a paint. Um, on the plains, they would do that on their faces, and they would do it on their ponies. And people and ponies, you know, don't last more than a hundred years. Whereas in Alaska, where they did it on totem poles, um, it's lasted for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. It would be really interesting to bring that back. Um, to artists, because artists always want to experiment and want to touch through the through the ages other artists. So we had already had lapis, and we said, okay, we can use our machinery, we can source 
uh, hematite, we can source uh, PM montite, we can source a lot of the minerals. Um, we can test them, make sure there's nothing uh, in them that's, that's uh, environmentally or um, health uh, hazard. So we get rid of those. Um, and then we process those with modern machines. So we have uni uniform grind um, and the paint would behave really, really well. And that was the advent of the Primatex series. Very, very interesting. Um, the one thing that you might not know is that I have a company um, that I own that processes the minerals. I have a geologist on site. He sources, he sources the world, the minerals. We process the minerals into pigment. Um, the pigment has to be less than 40 microns um, before it's, it's, we're able to use it. And 40 microns, just so you have an idea of what that looks like, this piece of paper, the width of this piece of paper is 100 microns. So it has to be uh, broken down uh, very far before we can use it as a correct particle. The inherent issue of doing that with a mineral is a mineral, many of the minerals we have, the majority of the minerals, um, are crystals. They have lattices. And while they break very easily, you can break them too far. And hello, Sue from California. What I like to say is it's very similar to having granulated sugar and powdered sugar. If you bring granulated sugar to your uh, window in the sunlight and move it, it's a crystal. You see all golds and yellows and greens and blues. It's, it's alive, it's gorgeous. Whereas if you bring the same sugar, but now in powdered form where there is no crystal, it's deader than a doornail. Well, the same thing would, um, would happen with our pigments if we process them too far. So there's really, um, not only is there a science behind everything, but just as you know, as artists, there's always an art behind everything. And it's, it's bringing those two things together that causes the beauty. Um, Eva asked, do I paint myself? No, I, I don't paint. Um, I play with colors. Um, but I'm not much of a person that can draw. Um, that's not, I, I'm not taking time to do it. At some point I need to take time to, to try to do that. Um, but no, I don't. So let me show you the uh, Primatex behind me. And uh, then we'll go and we'll look at the grays and the blacks. And I've also brought sticks. Hello, Caroline, Debbie. Uh, okay, here we go. So I'm going to move the camera this this. Okay, here we go. And so these are the Primatex. Um, blue Appetite, for example, you can see how it granulates. And this is Minnesota Pipestone. So Minnesota Pipestone. It comes from Minnesota, and this is how peace pipes were made with this mineral right here, calcolite. This one is always amazing. This is jadeite, and jadeite is always very cool. It's always very cool color. Um, Thomas Schuller really likes jadeite, so this is a, it's a beautiful, beautiful color. Um, Kingman, this is from the Kingman mine in Arizona, so Kingman. This one's always quite beautiful. This is garnet, and so these are garnets. This is garnet in matrix. And so you can see the garnets. This is purpurite. You can see the purpurite. Kyanite. This might be some of your burst stones. This is amethyst. That's an amethyst crystal. This 
is Sedona. Sedona's from Arizona. It's from Red Rock Country, right by the Grand Canyon. Very easy to crush this. It's more of a clay type structure. This one's kind of interesting. This is zoocyte. Zoocyte. And the thing that makes zoocyte really interesting are the rubies. These are all rubies. Those are all rubies. All the red you see are rubies. So really huge amounts of rubies in this particular mineral. And this is what it comes out to. Color. This one I always find interesting. This one is from, this is serpentine. And it's from Tasmania. Um, Tasmania, Australia. And it's just gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous color. You can see the kind of the purple here. And you can see the purple kind of in here. You can see how it drops down because it's heavy. This one is Green Appetite. Green Appetite is an unbelievably granulating color. It's a beautiful crystal, and it makes this beautiful, beautiful granulation. Just gorgeous. Just gorgeous granulation. The Bloodstones and the Hematites and the Hematite Violet, these are all iron ore. These are all iron ore colors. And this is hematite. This right here is hematite. Very heavy. Very, very beautiful. You can actually move this around with a magnet if you wanted to. Very, very beautiful. This is the natural pink called rhodonite. This is rhodonite. It's one of the most expensive pigments because it's a uh, jewelry grade pigment or ju jewelry grade uh, mineral. Very beautiful. Sodalite. Sodalite is also very popular. It's a very beautiful pigment. It's a beautiful paint, beautiful mineral. Lapis. So lapis, you probably all know. This is lapis. Lapis is always a baby blue. People ask, well, is it really, really dark? It's actually a baby blue. This is lapis. This is um, Chilean lapis. And so we get lapis out of two places. We get it out of Chile, and we get it out of Afghanistan. It's a very, very, very beautiful mineral. Um, this is fuchsite and red fuchsite. So you can see how metallic that is, see how metallic it is. And people ask, well, is that natural? And Although I don't, the mineral for that one's at work, I will show you that yes, this is, this is why it has that coloration, is because of the mica. It's just really heavily uh, laden mica, which really makes it sparkle. Another one is burnt bronzite. Burnt, burnt, burnt bronzite does the same thing. It's, uh, it has metallic in, mica inside of it. Okay, so those are, those are the Primatech colors. And now I'm gonna switch you over and we're gonna look at the black and the grays. Okay. Okay, so we have a number of grays and a number of blacks. And I'll show you some of the neat things these all, these do as well. So we have the lunar black. Ivory black. Lamp black. Lamp black is a carbon black. Graphite gray. P 
Payne's gray. Payne's blue. Neutral tint. James Gray. These three are Joseph's colors. This is Joseph's cool. Neutral. Joseph's warm. Alvaro's Caliente, warm. Alvaro's Fresco, cool. This one is a natural, this is black tourmaline. So this is a natural mineral, tourmaline, black tourmaline. Beautiful in its granulation. So very, very, very gran granulating, very natural color. So the ivory black, ivory black, is a carbon, so it has a very dark undertone. If we look at the, actually, I'm, I'm incorrect. Ivory black is actually made from charred animal bones, in this case, cattle. Um, and it has a slightly yellow undertone. If we look at the lamp black, lamp black, Lamp black has a very dark undertone. This is the ivory black. Lamp black, ivory black. And then the lunar black is synthetic and very highly granulated. It's a single pigment, very highly granulated. We're gonna play with this one in a second. So let me take lunar black and um, lamp black. I'm gonna take you over to this other station. You know what I don't know how to do is how to make that. Can you come hold this? I'm gonna have you hold it for a second. And I need to have the ivory black and lunar black. So I gotta make sure I have both colors here. Okay, so here we go. And I kind of wanted to show, I'm going to remove this. Ow. So if you could just hold it like that right there. Yeah. Okay. So I, I thought this was kind of interesting. This is lamp black and this is lunar black lunar black lamp black and this is hands of yellow light medium okay so
So what you can see is while the lamp black kind of um, uh, is opaque over the top of the yellow, doesn't allow it to bring in a lot, the lunar black breaks well. And you'll start seeing more and more of the yellow because the, the particles disperse, whereas they don't disperse as much within the lamp black. So it's kind of a neat color to play with because it doesn't overpower other colors you put it with. So I thought you might enjoy seeing that. Um, while we're here, there was some questions about the um, sticks. And uh, let me see if I can show you the... So there's, there's 51 sticks, 51 sticks. Um, they're all different series. There's quinacridone golds, there's Primatec, all within this, within this particular line. They all cost about the same as a series, a little less than a series one paint, yet they're series one, 20, 25 of them are series two, three, or fours. So from a deal standpoint, they're just an unbelievable deal. What I made them for was to give the watercolor artist something unique. So you can use them in many ways. If I tried, you know, painting with a, 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 a pan, I could do it. The pans went out quite, quite fast. But the neat thing about the sticks is I can, I can wet the stick with a brush and then paint and it comes, it wets out very, very, very quickly. Um, I could do wet. And very quickly, if you could see that, really quickly. So these aren't a crayon, they're actually pure color and pure pigment. And so when you can see that it doesn't go inside of the, um, uh, when the hole press, it stays on top and that's because there's no wax, it's just pure pigment. So you kind of see, and then you can always get a brush and you can always, you know, that it'll go instantly into paint. So it's a, it's a different way to be able to have and use your um, watercolor. Um, they are great for traveling. Uh, nobody from TSA will ever stop you if you have sticks. And there's a whole plethora of colors. Uh, we took the most favorite into, into, into sticks. So these, for example, are the quinacridones. And these are just some of the Primatec colors. So, and then just all the, the very uh, most popular colors that were turned into them. This is something else we have, which is the masking fluid, uh, Frisket. And it's, um, it's very, very, very popular, Daniel Smith masking fluid. So let me give you a shot. I'm gonna take this off. I hope it doesn't give you any seasickness here. So there are the, there's the um, Hansa Yellow with the Lunar Black, Hansa Yellow with the Lamp Black. This is the stick. You know, the stick is just, it's, it's extremely high pigment load. You can do it this way. You can paint from the end. You could do wet on wet. These are the colors. There we go. Let me get back to the station here. Okay. There we go. Bring back my light. Okay. Oh. There we go. Okay. 
Yeah, the sticks are really, they're quite nice. Um, different, many people use them in different ways. There's a lot of videos uh, on the Daniel Smith channel and also on YouTube of people using this. Um, they're, 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 they're not a crayon. They're just, they're just a, uh, a gum Arabic with a huge amount of pigment to hold them together. Uh, so, um, she's fantastic, and and there's a fantastic price point. They're less than a series one tube of paint, and as I said, um, about half of them are series two, three, and four. So it's a, it's a great way to have something else in the box. Claudia, you're very welcome. Um, yeah. The, the, Kim about the, the Primatex is uh, because there's differential a differential specific gravity in each one of them, um, because they're made up of different elements, they granulate superbly. They're, they're just really, really beautiful when it comes to that. Nothing matches them. Um, maybe just the lunars, uh, but for a natural, they're just phenomenal. Well, thanks, John, and thanks, Joanne. It was, it's, uh, it's difficult. I'm learning um, all the time how to use my um, iPhone and cameras. Um, I have new stuff coming. I'm, I'm probably one of Amazon's biggest fans of getting my uh, uh, video station up to working, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, next week, I'll start showing you um, images from the manufacturing floor. So kind of thinking about maybe taking you through having a color and then each week going through a couple of the processes. So you'll, you'll actually see that color being made all the way to the tube. I think you'll find that very, um, very interesting. Hello, Misha. Um, do the Primatex change batch to batch? No, they don't change batch to batch. Um, the mineral does change in uh, its natural setting. For example, the King Man versus the Sleeping Beauty because it's what's around it. But what, when we, it's not a matter of just grinding a, a mineral, it's about processing it. And the processing it takes a huge amount of chemistry because we need to make sure from one batch to the next batch they're consistent. Um, and that's all done through, through chemistry. Um, uh, we use different methods. Sometimes we'll put it with, we'll put the mineral or the particles within um, an oil matrix and they'll separate, they'll separate out differentially based on um, weight. So we can, we can match it every time, uh, but it's a lot of chemistry. You just can't grind things and then hope it'll work because it, it just won't. Um, Claudia Payne sounds great. Hello, Misha. Hello, Stella. Stella, you don't have these class in February. Yeah, we're all looking for classes next year. Oh, I can't wait to, to be able to get back out there again. Hello, Claudia. How do you obtain consistent color with the Primatex? Every mineral rock is different. Yes. Um, so every rock is different, but the minerals within the rocks are very, very consistent. So once we get percentages that we like, we can keep within those percentages. Um, if you don't, then they would change from batch to batch. And because we're making something for the professional artist, we want consistency. Uh, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of lab work to make that happen. You know, it's um, I think it's the same thing. Kim asked, "How do you learn so much about pigments?" I think it's the same thing that you do as artists, um, whether you're a, a creative or an artist, um, you ask questions. And I think that's, it's, it's because we always wanna learn. I mean, that's why you're here today and why I love that you're here today. It's, it's the desire to learn, um, uh, to learn also to contribute. I think both those things are really necessary and, and I love both. I love, to, I love to teach and I love being a student. I, I really enjoy both of them intensely. I love my job, yes. Um, uh, I have several different degrees. When I was in college, I was a, a botany major, and my discipline was physiology, so lots of chemistry. Um, I have my second degree in computer science. Uh, back then, uh, part of engineering, 
and then I have a, a degree in, in business. Um, but I love what I love what I do. It's so interesting to make to make that does no harm, and um, on the other side, it in the hands of artists, it does such beautiful things. I can look and say, um, I I we as a company made a product that allowed the artist to better um, express themselves. So I like being a, a little part of that. It's very exciting to me. Um, my people love it too. I have many people that have been with me for more than 30 years. I have mothers and daughters. I have fathers and sons. I have mothers and sons. So it is kind of like a family business. It's, it's, a, it's a great business. The art world is a great world. Um, I think we look at the world and say, how can it be better versus um, what can it do for me? I think that's a great, a great way to look at the world. Hello, Jane. Jane is from Australia. Um, absolutely wonderful. Uh, I'm amazed on all the other others you have. Each is different. Yeah, each each color is different. Each each uh, each uh, whether it's a pan or a stick um, or a tube. There, there. I think what I like to say is they all add to the artist's toolbox. They all allow allow you as the artist to decide what you want to use to express what you want to express. Which mineral do we find the hardest to obtain? The, the most of the, um, the is about the, is a really tough one to, to get. Um, it's not actively mined. Um, we look for, uh, there's been old gold tailings where they've gone after gold and they've like gophers, they have these big mounds and then now what people do is they go through and they go through the mounds to try to find rhodonite. So rhodonite is very difficult to find. Two, it's a um, jewelry grade mineral. So I have to compete against uh, people that want it for the jewelry market. So it's very, very difficult mineral to, to get. Yeah, it's, hello Besnik. Besnik is from Kosovo. Um, you know, the, the one thing that the company has allowed me to do is to meet artists, and um, I enjoy that. I enjoy it immensely. Um, I like looking, looking at ways of seeing the world. I like how the world is conveyed in color and pictures, and sometimes in ways, <coughs> excuse me, that I think of myself. So I, I really like that a lot. So uh, next week, I'll be able to go back to uh, show you some of the machinery. I think you'll find it quite interesting. I'll even show you some of the machinery that I use to do uh, and make um, pigment for minerals. Um, I think you'll find that quite interesting as well. Any new pigment for the next couple of years? We know we're always looking at new, um, new minerals. Uh, some of the minerals that we've looked at, they're so transparent that when you process them, there's no left. Um, so we're always looking at, at new minerals, and there's a couple that we think might be uh, good for our line. Um, so yes, we're always looking. Sarah from Ottawa, hello, Sarah. Um, Leslie, hello, Leslie. Met her so much. Well, thank you, Claudia. I'm, I'm glad that you use our brand. I know all of you have uh, uh, colors from other brands you like, and, and that's natural. I mean, I get that. Um, I like that you use ours, of course. Uh, so thank you very much. Hello, Jensen. I came to watercolor from oil painting. Ah, oil painting. I, I must say I love watercolor. I love oil. I love, I bought the company because when I started with Daniel Smith, um, I was in charge of converting uh, the computer system over to a, a new system. Um, it was a um, uh, Quantel system at that time, and we were changing over to um, Unix. If you're into computers, you know those things. Um, and Dan had me go to every single department to learn how the department worked, what their needs would be, how this new to be modified to meet the needs. And I was in the manufacturing department for almost three months during the summer. And the one thing that I remember I, I just so enjoyed the smell of 
was the linseed oil because in summer the linseed oil gets it gets warm and has that just phenomenal great smell um, it's hard to smell the gum arabic and you don't really want to smell a acrylic binder or a, a polymer because boy they stink but i still to this day remember how much i loved being in the manufacturing area in the summer smelling the the linseed oil and, and watching the guys it was it was wonderful Um, the quality part actually takes place inside of the laboratory uh, with my chief chemist and, and his chemists. So I would have to think how I would, yes, I would show you. One of them is going to be the xenon, which actually um, can do 100 years worth of light in four days. And I will show you that machine. Excuse me just a second. I need to drink a, a water real quick. Oh, my voice real quick. Hello, Jansen from Malaysia. Yes, I will show you um, some of the machines that we use. Everything that we have in our, on our floor, we have in miniature within our laboratory. Um, hello, John Miglosh. Tarun. So this week, we will go over some of the processes of how to make the paint. Um, I always read your messages, so please, please leave your messages. Um, I will get back to you. Um, I find them really, really interesting. Uh, and I feel, in, you know, that it's, well, I don't know if I should ask. Go ahead and ask. It's, uh, if, and if you don't want me to share it, just put, please don't share. That's fine, and I won't. But I enjoy getting to see your, your questions, and we'll get back to you. Yeah, horse feed, horse feed. I, I lived on a small ranch when I was growing up and yeah, the horse seed and the linseed, oh, it's it's phenomenal stuff. Suzanne, you're, you're very welcome. I thank you for letting me um, take the time to share. Again, um, ask me questions. Uh, I, I love telling people on next um, session about what I've learned so I can share your questions and answers. Thank you all very, very much for coming in today. And next week, I'll show you some of the machines. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.